When I reached the boarding house, I swept the snow off my clothes and pulled off my boots. The house was quiet and dark, with only the parlor lamp burning low. I cat-footed down the hall to my room, closed the door behind me, and slid between the sugans. I was asleep almost as soon as my head hit the pillow. Next morning, when I woke up and looked out the window, it was a whole different world. Water dripped off the roofs and spattered onto the boardwalks. The street was bare and muddy where snow had lain the night before. Puddles reflected the red skies of sunrise. Sometime after midnight, a Chinook wind had blown in and thawed out the valley. It had sighed down the eastern slopes of the Rockies, melting the crusted snow, and it had broke Dad Winter's grip on the land. When I sat down at the boarding house table that morning, there was conversation and laughter aplenty in the dining room. The widow Blair had cooked up a platter of griddle cakes, eggs, and deer sausage, and her boarders were doing their best to show their appreciation. Bucky Peterson, printer's devil at the Dry Creek Democrat, was flirting with Miss Ames, the new school marm, forking in grub all the while. Doc Taggart was recovering from a mild case of snow blindness, and he looked like a nearsighted gopher as he squinted against the morning light and sipped his coffee. Old man Jackson had his napkin tied around his scrawny neck and was wolfing down griddle cakes. And Lucy McNabb, who clerked at the dry goods store, giggled like a schoolgirl at the jokes of Ben Feeney, express man for the stage line. We sure were one big happy family that morning, and all because of a change in the weather. Ben Feeney grinned at me as I sat down next to Doc. Look who's here, folks, he said. It's Marilyn Fanshawe, Deputy U.S. Marshal in Progress County's Champion Eater. If he didn't oversleep once in a while, we'd all starve. I considered taking offense, but Ben was just feeling frisky. Besides, he handed me the platter of griddle cakes as he made his remark, and I was too hungry at the moment to argue. My stars, ain't that the truth, said Lucy. I never seen anybody eat so much or show it so little. I swan, you're thin as a rail, Merlin. Doc Taggart put down his coffee and squinted at me. Merlin has the metabolism of a hummingbird, he said. He doesn't stand still long enough to gain weight. I grinned back. It's Miss Blair's fault, I said. I don't expect I'd eat so much if she wasn't such a fine cook. It was the widow's turn to enter the jesting. I'm glad you appreciate me, she said, but there isn't much profit in cooking for you. Perhaps I should raise my rates. I swallowed a mouthful of griddle cake. You'd just drive me to bankruptcy, I told her. I couldn't resist your cooking at any price. <laughs>